Let me give you a sample today about the kind of counsel that I give in my classes. And since this is something that concerns young people as students as much as their parents, especially when the students are in school, I would urge a lot of parents to listen also. This is about examinations, or more specifically about examination phobia, fear, and how to deal best with it. Examination fear is of course as old as examination themselves. And when students and their parents get too upset about them, they often say how we wish that there were no examinations. But first of all, that's an absurd idea because anybody who is trying to learn anything, and it doesn't have to be anything academic, if you're trying to learn swimming or kung fu or music, without being examined, you never know yourself how well you have, how good you have become at it. So of course, we need examinations, we have to face examinations. Even if you have a negative attitude, it should be like this. It's like you know, taking injections. You have to take them because they are necessary evils. At best, you can regard them as fun challenges. Things that perk you up. Things that give you real thrills. Not the kind of thrills that you get on roller coasters perhaps. But the kind of thrill that energizes your whole being and your mind, which is the most important part of you. Now, I would like to start off by saying that, as some very great people have said, we read this about Mahatma Gandhi, we hear this about Franklin Roosevelt, the US President. We even read about it in Harry Potter. That the only thing you have to fear is fear itself. Now that's, that may sound trite or meaningless or superficial, but it's not. Very often you will see that fear makes you weaker and uh, makes you perform Below par. I learned this lesson very well when I was in class 9. I was terrified of mathematics examinations. And I had a wonderful teacher who told me, Shubro, your real problem is that you are afraid. Alright, I'll do something for you. I'll guarantee that I'll give you pass marks even if you don't make a scratch on your paper. The rest is up to you. See how high you can go, knowing that you're going to pass. And believe me, I scored in my 90s and ever since that, and my teacher smiled at me and said, see, I told you so. And ever since then, I never had a fear of mathematics anymore. I may never have loved it very much, but I pursued it right up to my postgraduate level and got very good exam scores. So I realized how right my teacher was. Now, unfortunately, and this is especially for the parents to hear, they often do their children a very great disservice by driving this fear of examinations deep into their children. From this springs every kind of minor and major evil from falling in before examinations and performing below par to cheating and rewriting their report cards in their own hand and running away from school and home and things like that and even, God forbid, things like suicide. And sometimes it is so regrettable, it's so sad. A child, 7 years old, 12 years old, 15 years old, ruined his or her own life by becoming depressed, by getting rid of studies completely once and for all by going off into a kind of career for which he was not suited simply because he was terrified of examinations. Tell yourself that if I study better and if I worry less, I will do my examinations better. Now you will see when if you go and take your examinations in a glad, confident, cheerful way as though you are going to challenge a rival rather than you know being terrified, being all you know drawn or shrunken up within you will actually perform better. There are certain good things that any teacher will tell you. Very easy to say, very hard to practice in real life. The best way to get rid of fear of examinations is study regularly, study hard, study all through your semester. Don't keep everything waiting. Don't let everything, all kinds of different things pile up till the last few nights before the examination. This is the first and most important thing. You can't have your cake and eat it too. If you have lazed and idled and uh, shirked your work all through the term, you will do badly. Your chances of doing badly in the examinations are very, very high. You have to accept. But otherwise, tell yourself, if I have worked hard, if I have revised thoroughly, then I am going to do well. Now, whether I'm going to do moderately well or excellently, that is something that no one can say. And if no one can say, why should I worry about it? No one can really say whether my aeroplane is going to meet with an accident whenever I uh, 
make a flight. Do I allow myself to worry myself sick? Or do I watch a good movie, read a good book or fall asleep all through the flight? Which one is the saner option? Which one is the better idea? Don't worry too much before the examination because worrying merely makes things worse for you. And there are many other things that you should keep in mind. The parents, I'm telling you, don't pester them, don't nag them, don't scold them too much before examinations or afterwards, even if they have not done uh, up to your expectations. Because firstly, nagging and scolding does not really improve their performance. Encouraging, helping them will work far better, number one. Number two, accept that if your son or daughter is not a uh, top-of-the-line student, your shouting and screaming at him will not make him better. And third, you know, perhaps you are spoiling the most important relationship in your life. By the time children are 16 or 18, they are so sick and tired of their parents nagging them insistently that, you know, they gradually drift away from their parents. This is what I have found to be the saddest thing in parental life. Children do not often understand that this is why they have done it. They are so sick and tired of their parents, endless nagging and screaming and scolding and recriminating. And the last and most important thing is, I want all children and their parents to keep it in mind that most of that fear is so utterly silly, so needless, so pointless. When those examinations pass, you let a few months go, a few years, you can hardly remember them. And if you remember how worried you were, you as parents or your children as students, you would, you are bound to feel silly. Because it didn't really make a difference, this is something, I have been a good student, I have been a good examination performer myself and I have discovered in my own life as in so many others that your exam scores matter only so much. I'm not saying they're completely useless, but we attach far more importance to them than to many other things which together go in for making a successful career. And if you look around yourself in every field, including academic fields, it is not the boys and girls who stood first or second in class who end up having the most wonderful and admirable career. So if you remember that, then examinations, even if they don't become a pleasurable experience, they will become a far less horrifying and agonizing experience for both you and your children, you and your parents. If you remember just this much, and if you remember that Shuruza said this with confidence, with authority, then I will believe that I have done you a good deed, a good turn indeed. I hope many of you will listen and think over it and remember. Thank you.